Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. And I must remind you, the opinions expressed by the host in this program ought to be your opinions, too. Thanks for joining us. We have a phone number, 1-877-NEWSMAX, if you want to talk. There's a lot on our plate today. But I just got hit, like, at 100 miles an hour. President Trump, a Republican, is calling for a 25-cent a gallon gas tax? Wow! And gasoline is higher than it's been in a while. And then here's the rub. He says that this will provide revenue over the course of the next 25 years. Well, hey, who knows what life's going to be like 25 years from now? If we have to build that wall, and I believe we should, there are better ways to pay for it than on the backs of the motoring public. Maybe a five cent a gallon gas tax. You know, be fair with the people who put you in office, Mr. Trump. I don't like the idea of a 25 cent a gallon gas tax. We have to find a better way, and it is doable. Anyway, some of the things on my mind this afternoon that I'd like to share with you. We will talk about the shooting that took place a mere 17 miles away from our Newsmax headquarters here in Boca Raton. We need to find out more about the shooter. What about the red flags that were missed? And of course, our hats off today to the coach, Coach Aaron Fies who lunged at the shooter to prevent other people from being shot. It's a horrible story, but we'll talk about it. And I do want to hear from you. What about the shooting at the high school in Parkland, Florida yesterday? Your thoughts, your opinions, your suggestions, your recommendations. And there's a lot of people out there with opinions. I'd like to hear what yours is. We'll meet our jerk of the day, a Florida man who called police with a confession, but he thought he was confessing to his wife. <laughs> He's a jerk. What can I tell you? What was he confessing about? A murder. Yeah, so he was a jerk to begin with before he made that mistake. And was the FBI told to lie to protect Hillary from the Benghazi investigation? We're going to look at that. Plus, we're going to learn some definitions that the media seems to be ignorant of. The media and many of the people in it, they don't know a magazine, a round, shells, stock, barrel. They have no clue what those things are. And they use that word semi-automatic as if they, they're trying to enforce some power into the weaponry that was used to slaughter 17 people yesterday. And they're wrong. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, Black History Month. Of course, it continues. This is February. We'll get a look at today in history, February 15th. We are midway through the month. It is the 15th of February. And uh, also on the agenda, there's a story that I think you ought to know about the FBI. Yes, I mentioned that. Uh, we have a chat box, boys and girls. When you go to NewsmaxTV.com, if you want to connect with us, you can talk to your heart's content there. If you don't want to go on the air and talk, you could certainly chat with us at Newsmax.com. We'd love to hear your comments, you know. And if it concerns me, believe you me, the people running the chat box are going to let me know what you have to say. That's the important part. And a little later, toward the end of our program, we're going to take a look at two actors who I think look exactly alike, and some people say they look like me. I disagree. I don't think so. Uh, yesterday, during the coverage, did any of you experience... Media fatigue. We just found out that um, the shooter from yesterday will not be allowed on bail. No surprise there. Uh, he will not receive bond. He will remain in custody in the Broward County Jail. And that's a good thing. I can't imagine him being let out. For his own safety, they have to hang on to him. What an ugly piece of debris this thing is. And uh, all right, we're going to talk about the, um, the fatigue the media coverage last night was overwhelming. Were you one of those who felt there was overkill? Did you tune out? Were you angry that some of your local programs were uh, expunged? How much is too much? Well, in the words of Brett Baer on FNC, he said the shooting, quote, took all the air out of the FBI memo collusion story. And what are some of the possible causes for this? You know, we ought to take a look at a history of the citizens' right to keep and bear arms. Plus, we'll also find out what Mike Pence had to say about Kim Yo-jung and uh, the Trump 
uh, GOP polling numbers are still skyrocketing. All that ahead, right here on Dick Farrell on Newsmax TV. Hope you can stick around. Hope you can join in. One eight seven seven Newsmax is our phone number. You know what? Let's start with a caller, Tony from Pennsylvania. Hello, sir. Thanks for joining us on Newsmax TV. Hi, uh, Dick. Uh, pleasure talking to you. I would like to know what your opinion is on the on these matters that I'm about to ask you. Now, the Dem uh, the uh, Republicans, uh, I think, are caving in on uh, this immigration policies. Uh, number one, they're caving in on more is, than just that. Yeah, right. They're, uh, they're outspending. They're outspending the the people they complained about when they got elected. They're spending more money that, than Democrats uh, did. Most Republicans will stay home and not vote at all because of uh, the president's policy with these pillars that he's got that seem to be crumbling in, in, uh, with his base. Num number two is uh, the Bonnie and Clyde of the, uh, the 21st century. Uh, <laughs> Hillary and uh, uh, her <laughs> husband, uh, <laughs> uh, Bill. Bill. Now they made more money without guns than, uh, than Bonnie and Clyde and the mafia combined. Uh, are they, what's your opinion on, on those babies? Well, I don't have to tell you that for way too long. For 25 years, they have been ducking and dodging the long arm of the law. You know, it wasn't that long ago that many of their colleagues went to jail for being their accomplices in the criminal behavior that they've been engaging in. And even one of them died in prison. And in case you forgot, once upon a time, there was a fellow with a big lip, a big lower lip, and he said... Don't tell me I have to roll over again for Bill and Hillary. His name was Webb Bahubu. And he pretty much told you in that one line that he's been doing all of their water carrying all of their lives. and He was fed up. And then there was, of course, the McDougals. They went to jail. Big Jim died in jail. And, you know, Big Jim was only about 58 or 59 years old when he passed away. He looked like he was 90. The Clintons have been associated with a criminal conduct, a criminal conspiracy, a criminal enterprise all of their public lives. From the time they lost the Rose Law Firm books until just past this election, they have never engaged, I believe, in, uh, in, in observing or respecting the law. They have lived a life on the lam, much like Bonnie and Clyde. But I must tell you, Tony... They're not going to find themselves ambushed on a highway on May 23rd, 1934, like Bonnie and Clyde did. Thank you for the call, sir. Glad you were there. Uh, he, he just talked about the, uh, the GOP. We'll get to Jerry in a moment. Uh, we were, I just want to go to Trump's. Uh, go to story number six, if you can. The GOP and uh, Donald Trump are experiencing a very strong reaction to the latest polling information. If you can uh, pull up what we have over there, we're going to go take care of that. Otherwise, you know, maybe we should talk to Jerry. Jerry in Virginia, let's go. I want to hear what's on your mind this afternoon. Hey, uh, first of all, this guy, the shooter, he wanted notoriety. He got it. Second, uh, who in hell's name advises the president? It seems they're not doing their job very well. Thank you, Dick. Thank you for the call. Uh, you will notice I am going to avoid talking about the shooter. I don't want to mention his name because he would love us to. I don't want to aggrandize him. I don't want to celebrate him. I don't want to turn him into any kind of hero. He's a piece of low-life bleep. This is as strong as I can say it on television. Um, we really need to concentrate on the people who were heroic yesterday, like the coach, Aaron Fies a man who put his own body in the way of bullets so that others would not be harmed. That is a tremendous accomplishment for any human being. But I've got a lot to tell you about guns and violence. You know, there is a, um, a professor, uh, University of Chicago Law Fellow and University of Florida. His name is uh, John Lott. John Lott has written extensively about the availability of guns, and their relationship to the amount of and intensity of crime. And um, if we can uh, pull up, if you can, this first piece with John Lott, 
If you guys have it back there, let's um, here. Here, John Lott is going at it with. Uh, remember, Pierce Morgan, a vicious anti-gunner. Uh, Pierce Morgan is talking to John Lott, and uh, John uh, pretty much laid it on the line for him, courtesy of our friends over at CNN. Here, take a look at this. Explain to the victims of what happened in Aurora, Colorado, why that premise is true. Because police can't be there all the time to protect you. It'd be great if they were. My research finds police are the single most important factor for protecting people. But the problem is that even the police understand themselves, they virtually always, as in this case, arrive on the crime scene after the crime's already been committed. Same in Europe. Europe has a lot of multiple victim public shootings that are going on there. You know, just look at the Norway case from last year, or Germany, or other countries that are there, the U.K. And um, Professor Lott has appeared on numerous shows defending the right to keep and bear arms and pointing out with statistics how more guns equals less crime. Uh, we have another clip of uh, John Lott. Uh, here he is in a debate with Alan Dershowitz over the availability of weapons. Um, can we roll that? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. There was a piece back there somehow magically disappeared <laughs> that uh, we have him going at it with another professor, a law professor. And I think John Lott got the better of the two. He pointed out, and I, I can share this with you from my own experience, there are over 85 million Americans who legally own firearms every day, and they shoot that number almost 200,000 times a year. A person with a legally owned gun, whether it be a police officer or a citizen just abiding by the law, 200,000 times a year, they utilize their own weapon to protect, defend, and save a life whether it be from two-legged animals or four-legged ones. There are way more, and I mean lots more, maybe as much as 100 to 1, events where guns are used to protect and save lives as opposed to where guns are used to kill innocent people. We have to think long and hard about gun bans and their result. When we come back, I've got some stuff to tell you about regarding that, that we can't just ban guns. It's a knee-jerk, narrow-minded reaction to what we have here 17 miles from our doorstep in Parkland, Florida. We'll discuss that and take your phone calls. Stay right here. Newsmax TV, my name is Dick Farrell. Certainly glad to be here for you. I'm not going away, and I hope you won't either. I'm Newsmax TV. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, regurgitating all of the information that we've had over the last almost 24 hours now. I don't know where you were, what you were thinking about when, uh, when you first found out about this awful uh, tragedy yesterday. My first concept, my first thinking was everyone, or not everyone, but a lot of people are going to say, this means we must ban guns. We've well, got to think about banning guns and what that means. Let me give you a quote here from uh, a fellow named Mao Tse Tung. November 6, 1938. I know, it's a long time ago, 80 years ago. He said, all political power comes from the barrel of a gun. The Communist Party must command all the guns. And uh, then there was Adolf, the same year. Earlier that year, he said, the most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow the subject races to possess arms. History shows that all conquerors who have allowed their subject races to carry arms have prepared for their own downfall by doing so. Indeed, I would go so far as to say that supplies of arms to the underdogs is a sine qua non for the overthrow of any sovereignty. That was Adolf and Mao Zedong. Those are the people who want to ban guns. We have to be careful and vigilant that we don't allow people like those to call those shots. Now, in Switzerland, they have one of the highest rates of gun ownership in the world. But 
Little gun-related street crime. <clears throat> Some opponents of gun control hail it as a place where firearms play a, play a positive role. Swiss gun culture is unique, and guns are more tightly regulated than many assume. We have um, lawful gun owners commit less than a fifth of all gun crimes, according to a novel analysis released by the University of Pittsburgh. In the study, led by um, Anthony Fabio of Pittsburgh's Graduate School of Public Health, researchers partnered with the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police to trace the origins of all 893 firearms that they had recovered on crime scenes over the year 2008. And the point being made is law-abiding citizens are not the ones committing crime. That's why they are law-abiding citizens. Now, we could talk about this shooter yesterday in Parkland who um, acquired this weapon entirely legally, went into a gun store, passed through the background checks, and then hence discovered that he was able to get his hands on what's known as an AR-15, a semi-automatic weapon. Now, for those of you who don't know, semi-automatic means with each pull of the trigger, one bullet is expelled. A bullet is called a round. Here, we have a graphic of that. Um, people think when they hear the word round, they're thinking of a hula hoop. No, no. We have a graphic of that. Um, a round is a bullet. There you go. That Each one of those is a round, not a hula hoop. There, see? A lot of confusion. Also, there's more confusion over magazines. You heard the media mention magazine yesterday over and over again. He had many magazines. Well, here, let's get a picture. This is what a magazine really is, as opposed to what many of the media think it is. And they are very much confused about this. So um, understand that uh, a lot of the terminology regarding firearms is misunderstood most of the time. And I'm here to, I'm here to tell you about it. Yep, we also have shells. So... Uh, a lot of the media people think, there's your shells, folks, yeah. Those are shells, and these are shells. These are the empty shell casings of already expended rounds, which are bullets, okay, so that we understand each other. A lot of times there are people in the media who have no clue. They, don't, they, they like to say semi-auto because it sounds hip, cool, like, you know, like it means more dangerous. The truth is semi-auto isn't any more dangerous in an AR-15 than it is in any handgun. I heard a senator, um, U.S. senator from Florida, Mr. Spaceman, Nelson, he uh, wants a ban AR. I want a ban AR-15. Nobody needs an AR-15 to go hunting. Well, you know what? An AR-15 firing one shot per pull of the trigger is no different than a 38 or a 45 or a Glock 9. You pull one trigger, one bullet comes out. Now, this character, whose name I refuse to mention on camera or even, even think about, he had many of these magazines, which are what they like to call clips. It is not a clip, it's a magazine. It's not a magazine like Newsmax magazine. No, these are not the magazines they're talking about. They're talking, we have a picture of what, uh, what uh, firearms magazines look like? Yeah, well, no magazines to show you. Let's go to, is this a Cliff, did you say, is on the phone? Bobby, welcome to Dick Farrell on Newsmax TV. Hi, Dick. I got a question for you. X. You had mentioned earlier, you said, uh, did, was the FBI told to protect Hillary? The answer is yes. And here's the deal. He was to... Uh, Obama was to protect her and support her for election, and she, in return, was to appoint him to the Supreme Court. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know where you found that, but I've got something that backs you up with me right here and right now. If uh, we want to take a look at it, uh, look at D4. Let's take a look at D4. You could stay on the phone as I uh, go through this. Uh, Hiller, the FBI, we, according to this new evidence, no, that told us that members of the FBI were told, were given orders to protect Hillary way back in 2011, or I think it was 2012, September 2012, when the Benghazi uh, tragedy took place. The FBI was told to um, 
to, uh, to lie. There we go. The FBI instructed agents to lie about Benghazi to protect Hillary. That's what happened. And, you know, if you look more carefully at that situation, that's pretty scary. What's happened to our FBI? They're supposed to enforce the law, not break it. Maybe we're reaching a point where the FBI needs to be torn down from the top to the bottom and rebuilt. I'm kind of wondering about this law enforcement agency, FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm kind of wondering, have they been weaponized? Have they been politicized enough? Maybe it's time for them to be put to rest. Maybe it, we ought to be finished with them. But I uh, thank you for the call, sir. Glad you were there. one newsmax is our phone number. one newsmax If you want to talk about something, I'd like to listen to you. Coming up, uh, we'll hear from our jerk of the day, a guy who may have committed a murder, and instead of confessing to his wife about killing his girlfriend, he ended up confessing to the detective investigating the crime. Seriously fun stuff, folks, but the guy qualified for our jerk of the day. Also looking ahead, uh, we're going to take a look at Black History Month. We're going to meet a man who you probably never heard of because, well, you know, when it comes to Black History Month, all the media wants you to hear about are the singers, the dancers, the ball players. They just want to keep reinforcing that stereotype. But we're going to meet Dr. Charles Drew. If you've ever needed blood, if you've ever received a transfusion, if you've ever given blood, if you know what blood plasma is, you have a debt of gratitude to Mr. Uh, Dr. Charles Drew, whose uh, short life made so many people live a great deal longer. We'll learn about him coming up on Black History Month. And also, I we'll want to remind you about the chat box on Newsmax.com. You can chat with us about what you think about this or any other show. And if my name pops up, they will be sure to tell me about it. And I won't mind, uh, you know, uh, contacting you back. I like to talk to people. And we have to also debunk. It has finally been debunked. It started out on uh, one of these crazy uh, wacko radio shows. I don't want to mention their name. As it would be, it would be giving them a plug. One of these crazy, wacko radio guys, like I used to be, uh, was telling a story that the Uranium One exec was killed in the plane crash near Moscow this past weekend. Uh -uh. Totally debunked. We'll run through that, too, when we get back. After this brief pause on Dick Farrell on Newsmax TV. Whatever you do, don't go away. And I promise I won't go away either. Shame on him. Secretary Shulkin used $120,000 of our money so he can go to Wimbledon. I think he ought to resign. Yeah. Hey, they made Price resign. Remember the former Secretary of Health and Human Services? He misused a couple of hundred thousand dollars for some free rebrides around the country. And he got taken to the can. Shulkin shouldn't be any different. It's the same crime done by another cabinet officer. And it's time that the cabinet officers pony up to the law and stop thinking of themselves as elitist snobs, which they really are. You know, it's funny. You don't see the very wealthy members of the cabinet. And there are quite a few. You don't see them doing any of that stuff. You wouldn't see uh, the education secretary, Betsy DeVos. She wouldn't, she wouldn't take $120,000 worth of freebies. She's got plenty of her own money. And the same thing goes for uh, that fellow who lives on Palm Beach right next to Donald Trump. He wouldn't do it. He's worth billions. And, of course, our Secretary of State, he's worth billions, too. Maybe it's a good idea to have very wealthy people in office. They won't be stealing from the rest of us. Your thoughts are welcome. 1-877-NEWSMAX. I am here to hear you. We are going to a live press conference, Parkland, Florida, to learn more about the shooting that happened less than 24 hours ago. Let's go there now. Uh, uh non-real calls, which, which is a good thing. But as we began to respond, we got more and more information that is more and more real for us. Myself, along with uh, several other chief officers and uh, fire personnel, 
were responding to the scene. As we got to the scene, we had to set up an appropriate command post and triage area to deal with the amount of possible patients that we were going to have. As we approached the scene and got set up, we got some information that there may be patients on the west side of the building. So I went around to investigate that, where um, we did locate one victim and uh, removed them from that area. And I returned to the command post. I can tell you that all the first responders trained for events like this. We hope we never have to use it. We hope we never have to use that training. This is a horrible event. But I'm very, very proud of all of the firefighter paramedics, all the first responders, the ER folks, everybody that treated these patients did it with such a high level of professionalism and readiness that I cannot say enough about. I want to thank you guys for allowing this opportunity. And uh, our firefighters can never, our, our, our first responders can never on see what they saw yesterday. So we will work with them to make sure they get the resources they need to, uh, to get through this as part of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have, uh, that was kind of nondescript because he didn't really tell us much. He says, we found out some new stuff and we use training we don't want to have to use. That's all he really told us. I don't think there was any, any value there, but or that we don't already know. However, when we return, I'd like to take a quick look at the shooter and a little bit more about his background and a little bit more about what may have caused this and how it can be prevented. I have a couple of good ideas about it. You want to hear them? Don't go away. I'll be right back and I'll tell you all about it. So many times we hear in advance of a possible massacre. So many times we are warning signs are there in front of us. And so many times, tragically, we fail to recognize them. Here we go to this clip. A youngster at the school yesterday told um, the news media that uh, this fellow was, quote, expected to do this. Do we have that on, uh, I think? Saying that he was the, the one that screwed up the school, but it turns out, you know, Everyone predicted it. It's it's that's crazy. Well, wow, he must have come on the campus, then, right? Yeah, he was on the third floor. He knows the school layout. He knows where everyone would, would be at as of right now. He he's been in this on fire drills. He's prepared for this stuff. Everybody predicted it. Did you hear him? Everybody predicted it. So why didn't they do something before it happened? There's even a story that tells us the FBI was aware of this fellow. In fact, he went on social media less than a year ago. If we take a look at this picture of him, we believe that this is a posting he put up on YouTube. Or there's a still shot of him on YouTube. We don't really know if it's him. But it did come in under his name, where he said he wanted to, quote, be a, quote, professional school massacrer. Those are the words he used. A professional school killer. And he praised some of the other killers, including, of all people, way back in history. In 1966, the Clock Tower Massacre took place at the University of Texas. On my birthday, by the way, and I was only 10. Uh, the sniper in the Clock Tower shot almost, I think, 30-some-odd people, killing about 27 of them before he was finally taken down by law enforcement. This is what our shooter yesterday planned to do. But he obviously, his plan didn't really work out for him, did it? He only killed 17 people. Even one is one too many. But at this deadly mass shooting, what is it that we can do now that we've seen how this thing happened? Well, first of all, it sure is time for us to have metal detectors going into every school. We cannot allow people walking in and out of schools with guns 
unless they're law enforcement agents or, as I believe, trained professionals who know how to use weapons. It is high time we take a look at the possibility of allowing teachers to be properly trained and other school personnel to be properly trained to protect and defend the students that they are serving. Anything less than that is suicidal. Now, this fellow got in and rang the fire alarm and opened fire, ambushing those people, escaping what they thought was a drill or a fire or some such thing like that. But if there would have been somebody armed at the scene, they could have stopped him dead cold. I always go back to one of the mass shootings I recall from way back. Uh, December 22nd, 1984. Uh, there was a, I don't want to say gentleman, in Long Island, New York, at a Long Island Railroad station who opened fire on afternoon rush hour commuters and killed several of them, wounding many more, he had time to reload three times before he finally ran out of ammo when he stopped shooting. One of the victims was a man whose wife would later go to Congress because of it. Had one of those people had a two-shot Derringer on them, they could have stopped the carnage. I don't understand why gun banners believe that their total gun ban is somehow going to prevent this from happening. Throughout the spinning globe, in countries that have banned guns everywhere, there have still been mass crimes. Whether they use guns or bombs or fire, they still commit their crime. It's not the gun that's doing it. I mean, we, we saw Dunblane, Scotland years ago. Shooter wiped out a whole bunch of people. But Dunblane doesn't allow guns. The state with one of the most difficult gun laws for anyone to acquire a weapon, Illinois, has more gun deaths than anybody else has. Chicago. 3,400 gun deaths every year on average. It doesn't add up. Banning guns is not the answer. But having more armed citizens protecting and defend themselves just might be. Have we tried it yet? Well, a lot of people say, you'll make it like it's the old Wild West. Hey, guess what? The old Wild West was a polite society. Yeah, there was killing. Yeah, there were people shooting each other. But you know what? There were, a lot of unarmed, there were a lot of armed people whose lives were saved because of their guns. Anyway, we'll get a look at uh, Black History Month when we come back. And, oh, I want to share something with you. A good friend of mine who is an acting coach in California, his name is Kent, he wrote in to tell me that he thinks I look like uh, Nick Offerman of that show, Parks and Recreation. <laughs> well, we'll get a look at Nick Offerman and another actor who I think looks like him. Uh, a fellow by the name of Bernard Fox, who was a star way back in the 60s on Hogan's Heroes. We'll take a look at those pictures, too, and you decide if I look like those guys. I don't think so. Anyway, we're coming back at you here on Newsmax TV. I'm Dick Farrell, and your phone calls are welcome, one newsmax And remember, you can go to our Newsmax website and chat. If you don't want to talk on TV, you can, of course, talk to somebody in the chat room there, and I'll find out what they are saying, and I'll respond, too. Thanks for being here this afternoon. I'm Dick Farrell on Newsmax TV. We're smack in the middle of Black History Month, and each day on this show, I like to highlight the accomplishments of a great African-American. And today, Dr. Charles Drew, an American physician, surgeon, and medical researcher, he researched the field of blood transfusions, developing improved to, 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 to Tuskegee, Alabama, to attend the annual free clinic at the John A. Andrew Memorial. Here's a little bit more about what was accomplished by this great American who happened to be black. While working on his doctorate at Columbia University in the late 1930s, Drew conducted research into the preservation of blood plasma. His research led to ways of efficiently storing large quantities of blood plasma into blood banks. He also organized and directed the blood plasma programs of the U.S. and U.K. in the early years of World War II, pioneering a medical advancement that has saved countless lives.
We want to thank uh, Eugene Armstead for that video on YouTube. The sad thing about Mr. Drew is he was working so many hours that he practically drove off the road and died as a result of car injuries. An unfortunate loss, but not before he gave us something we will always remember and use and save lives with. Hey, today in history, it was on this day, February 15, which is, of course, the 46th day of the year, that uh, the U.S. House of Representatives and had a feud going on. They actually had fisticuffs. 1789, it was ugly. You know, it might even happen again. There you go. That's what it looked like. They were throwing things at each other. In 1564 this day, Galileo Galilei, you know him, right? Born in Pisa in Italy. Happy birthday, Galileo. In 1898, the U.S. battleship Maine mysteriously blew up in Havana Harbor, killing more than 260 American servicemen and triggering what would later be known as the Spanish-American War. Happy birthdays today. Actress Claire Bloom is 87. Happy birthday, darling. Also celebrating a birthday, Melissa Manchester, who's uh, 67 today. Happy birthday from all of us at Newsmax TV. So glad you could celebrate February 15th with us. We're back with a closing note and a comedian who some folks think I look like. When we get back here on Newsmax TV, don't go away.